This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer, Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. And this is Deepa and I am going to present the English version of the Tamil video. In my last video, I explained about the favorable dashas, unfavorable dashas for the native of Aquarius ascendant. I also suggested a few professions which the native of Aquarius ascendant can take in order to earn their daily bread. In this video, I thought of doing it as a live program. So I'm going to explain the effects of the planets in the house of Pisces as a live YouTube program. Needless to say, there was a great huge reception for the effects of different planets in each house right from Aries to Aquarius and also the videos regarding the favorable dashas and unfavorable dashas for the native of each ascendant. This is a video that is going to explain the effects of the planets in the house of Pisces. For all the videos that I published while I was explaining the effects of different planets in each house, I first of all explain the basic characteristics of the house. This is how I explained in each of my videos before explaining the effects of different planets in every house. The Pisces is the 12th house of the Kala Purusha that is the natural zodiac. This house signifies the completeness, the fullness. I have shared a very important intricacy about the house of Aquarius. Let me not repeat that point in this video. I mentioned in the video that Aquarius is the last house in the natural zodiac based on the concept of light energy. I don't want to explain more in detail about those concepts here again. Many of you have seen all the videos regarding the effects of planets in each house. Pisces is the 12th house of the natural zodiac. The Pisces varies from 330 degrees to 360 degrees in the space. The space is divided as 360 degrees and Pisces is the last house which expands in the last 30 degrees of the space. This is Jupiter's own house. Based on the categories of the Rashi, this is Upaya Rashi, that is dual sign. This is an even sign, this is a feminine sign. The stars that reside in the house of Pisces or the fourth pada of Puratadi, that is Purvabhadra, all the four padas of Uttaratadi, that is first pada, second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Uttaratadi, that is Uttarabhadra, and all the four padas of Revati, that is first pada, second pada, third pada and fourth pada of Revati. The nine padas of these three stars are present in the house of Pisces. I have explained the Panjabuddha Tattva of Rashi right from Aries sign. Pisces is the 12th house of the Kala Purusha that is the natural zodiac. The Pisces is the house that expands from 330 degrees to 360 degrees in the space and this is the last house. This house signifies the final stage or final phase of all things in the life. Based on the Rashi Tattva, Pisces is a Opaya Rashi that is dual sign and this is the fourth dual sign. The first category is Chara Rashi that is mobile sign and the second one is Thira Rashi that is fixed sign and the third is Opaya Rashi that is dual sign. 
Among the category of masculine or feminine signs, this is a feminine sign. Among the classification of odd or even sign, this is an even sign. The house of Pisces have the stars Puratthadi, that is Purva Bhadra, the fourth Pada, and all the Padas of Uttiratthadi, that is Uttra Bhadra, and all the Padas of Revati. The pictorial representation of Pisces is twin fishes that resembles the same. One fish head catches the tail of the other. I would say the pictorial representation of Pisces is the pictorial representation of the universe existence. Nothing exists out of universe and everything is connected in the universe. Imagine you are starting a journey from point A in the universe. You will definitely reach the very same point A which is the end of the journey which was your starting point of the journey in the universe. Please see if you understand. If one is interested to explore or to know about the end point of the universe and they are heading towards it, once they reach the end point of the universe, it will be definitely the starting point of the universe. This might be hard to understand. However, this is the symbolic representation of the Pisces. The house of Pisces is represented by two fishes which lie opposite to each other. They look same in appearance. How does the fish live? They will live as groups. The fish never wants to live alone. Each fish belongs to a school that is a group. The native of Pisces Rashi would not love to live alone. Even the native of Aries Ascendant or so, and I have mentioned this point while I was explaining about the native of Aries Ascendant or Rashi. The native of Aries Ascendant or Rashi would love to live as groups though they have a lot of fight between themselves. They reflect exactly the mentality of the herd of sheep. What we understand is the Aries will always be in connection with each other, though they still fight. The native of Pisces Rashi or Ascendant would not love to live alone, rather they would love to live along with their people. They would love to live with their race or groups. The native will be very clean. The fish is a species that keeps its environment clean that lives in the water. This sign is filled with a lot of water in it. Based on the Panjabuddha Tattva, this sign represents the water. And therefore, this is a combination of Upayarashi and watery sign. If only you understand the plot where the planet resides, you will understand the effect of the planet when it is residing in a particular house. This is a watery sign and this is Upayarashi. This is a dual sign. The dual sign is a combination of the stable and moving nature. There are totally three watery signs in the natural zodiac. The first watery sign is Cancer, which represents the running water, for example rivers, etc. The Cancer represents the running water that begins from one place and reaches another place. Therefore, Cancer represents the rivers and areas such as rivers. And the Scorpio represents the water that is still. For example, the water contained in the bucket or the water contained in a well which is bounded by an area. The water which was encapsulated within the boundaries. For example, a pool or a lake etc. If you take the example of a pool, then it is surrounded by land on all the four sides and the lake is also bounded by the land on all the four sides. Or even we can take the very simplest example, the bucket of water 
because that is also bound by the plastic container which is a bucket. And the Pisces is the combination of these two because this is the Upeya Rashi. So it combines the two characteristics that is running water and still water which is nothing but sea. If you wash the ocean or sea, there will be a lot of currents inside them. There are a lot of tidal waves which are always moving and there is also still water. Therefore, an ocean is a combination of both still and running water. The Pisces represents the seas and the oceans. If one's profession is in such a way that they always work in the areas related to the sea or the ocean or they travel in a cruise or ship, then definitely the Pisces must be Subhatva for that person. Among the body parts, the Pisces represents the feet. This is the 12th sign of the natural zodiac. Therefore, the last one, it represents the feet of the human body. Among the body parts, the Pisces represents the feet and I will give you one more example that how the fundamental knowledge of the house will be helpful in prediction. My second example, if a sportsman is a football player, then he should have a very strong feet. The sportsman whose legs needs to be very strong and for that sportsman, the Pisces must be Subhatva. If you want to know whether a person will gain success in the sports field, where the strength of the feet is really important, then you have to check the 12th house of the Kala Purusha, that is Pisces, and also the 12th house to the ascendant in a natal chart of that particular person. Having said all these, the Pisces represents the fullness, the completeness of all the things in life. This house also represents duality. This house represents the nature of living together with the people. This also represents the regions of water and around water. These are the common characteristics of the house of Pisces. This is the feminine sign, even sign, dual sign and watery sign. Well, let me explain what should be the characteristics of this sign. I am not usually interested to explain about the characteristic of a particular Rashi. Because a person's character is decided by the Rashi, the Ascendant, the planets that influences the Rashi and the Ascendant that is in conjunction or aspect or Star Lord of the Ascendant and Subhatva of the planets and Pabhatva of the planets that is in connection with the Rashi and Ascendant. You see there are a lot of factors to decide the characteristic of a particular person. The general characteristics are based on the Rashi. Jupiter is the Lord of the house of Pisces. So in general the nature of Pisces Rashi will be good. And they will be very innocent. They can be cheated by anybody easily. I would definitely call the innocence of the Pisces as something being extremely good. Because there is a shortcoming of being extremely good natured in life. This is such a sign that the native does not want to cheat anybody. They will be extremely good. These are the people who give more donations to the needy when compared to the others. There is a proverb in Tamil which says, Paathiram arindu pichai idu. That is, before giving the alms, before making contributions or donations, you have to definitely check the status of the person. The people of Pisces house will never do so. They will not check whether the person really is in need and they will be ready to offer anything they have. They will not hesitate to donate anything what they have. The house lord of the sign is Jupiter. This is the 12th house of the Kala Purusha. The body part that Pisces signifies is feet. 
This house completely represents the characteristics of Jupiter. What does the Jupiter signifies? The banking sector, the sectors that relates to money, the department of justice, the judge who gives unbiased verdict. And what is the very basic nature of Jupiter? Preaching, teaching, because Jupiter is the guru. If you find the Pisces house to be Subhatva in the natal chart of a person, then definitely the person will be a teacher or a preacher, will work in the domain related to the significance of Jupiter or the person would love to work in the banking sector. Among the banking sector, the first level of ranking or the position is signified by Sagittarius. Based on the Subhatva and Sukshma strength of my concept, if Jupiter is in connection with the second house and 10th house in your natal chart, definitely you will be working in the banking sector, in the teaching field, etc. My concepts of Subhatva and Sukshma strength will never fail and will never change. If you analyze any natal chart, then definitely this will be proved and you will find this to be true. This house also represents many strange things like the things that got lost or the ones who are imprisoned. When a person is in prison, it means he is not living his life. Rather, he undergoes or he has a hidden life from the society. Because they have very little communication with the society. People cannot go and meet an imprisoned person easily. Am I right? I cannot definitely go and meet an imprisoned person as I meet my neighbor or a friend. If somebody has to meet a person in prison, then definitely they have to get permission from the government. You cannot go and meet the person who is imprisoned anytime you wish. It is not possible. Definitely there is a need for legal permission in order to meet the person who undergoes the prison life. Therefore this house represents the person who is hidden from the society, who gets lost and this house also represents the final phase of the human being which is moksha. This house also tells us how death can occur and what will happen after the death. You can find all these details from the 12th house of the Kala Purusha. If you want to know about the bedroom of a person and the final phase of their life, then this house will definitely explain about it. If you want to know about the final, the last days of the man's life, you have to check the Pisces which is the 12th house of the Kala Purusha and also the 12th house to the ascendant in the natal chart of a particular person. If only you know the basic plot, you will understand how to predict the effects of the planets when it resides in a particular bhava. I often say in order to make complete predictions, you must know the house effects, the significance of the house. Therefore, the house of Pisces signifies the place of teaching. It is necessary that the Pisces should be Subhatva for those who are working in banking sectors and the Department of Justice. And planets like Jupiter, Venus and Mercury should reside in the house of Pisces for people who work in such sectors. When Pisces is Subhatva, the person would love to share the knowledge that they possess. The person would like to preach and the person would like to share his or her knowledge without expecting anything in return from others. The Pisces should be Subhatva in this case. There are only two planets that can motivate the person to share his or her knowledge to others. It might be teaching or preaching. The two planets are Jupiter and Mercury. Whenever Uphaya Rashi is very strong, 
that is the dual sign is very strong such persons will share their knowledge without expecting anything in return they will not have any ulterior motivation in sharing their knowledge having said all these the pisces indicates all the features of the 12th house the important aspects of the 12th house such as the share market gambling the income that comes to you surreptitiously the income that comes to you surreptitiously or signified by the 12th house a person who absconds owing to a lot of debts or a person who migrates to another country or a person who settles in another country the knowledge of the shastras especially the hidden shastras exploring that is still unknown to the outside world exploring the state of the soul post death or exploring what happens after death to a person what we will become after death exploring something that is considered to be not existing or signified by the 12th house of the kala purusha which is pisces based on the 12th house of the kala purusha that is pisces in your birth chart and 12th house to your ascendant you have to make predictions i feel that the introduction about the house of pisces is enough since i have told all the general characteristics about the house of pisces let us recap the characteristics of the house of pisces this is the upaya rashi this is a dual sign this is an even sign this is a feminine sign and watery sign this is a dual watery sign i have explained all the general characteristics of pisces among the body parts the pisces signifies the feet it is necessary that the pisces should be strong for all the professions where the power of the legs or feet are very much needed like football now let me explain the effects of different planets in the house of pisces the house lord of pisces is jupiter now let us see who are friendly planets to jupiter the sun moon and mars and among the shadowy planets it is ketu all these four planets belong to the jupiter team and of course they will support jupiter a lot and the planets such as venus saturn and mercury have the contrasting characteristics to that of jupiter and now let us see among these planets which planet can deliver benefits when it resides in the house of pisces let me explain about the very first planet sun when it resides in the house of pisces when the sun resides in the house of pisces it will be in the 8th house from its own house leo the sun becomes subhatva though it is in the 8th house from its own house leo in addition to this planetary position when sun has combusted the venus it will definitely deliver the benefits from government and the government related benefits post in government sectors despite all these the sun will be in the 8th house from its own house leo but the antidote for this is my concept of subhatva pabhatva and sukshma strength if you understand this you can definitely make good predictions the subhatva concept of mine is an antidote for the planet which is in retrograde or when a planet is combusted or when a planet is even eclipsed when a planet gets subhatva despite all the shortcomings definitely the significance of the planet will be delivered when it is subhatva this is a rule of astrology the concepts of my subhatva and pabhatva will be definitely accurate i'm really happy to see most of my subscribers and i understand from their comments that they do understand the concepts of subhatva and pabhatva to a certain extent that is all i understood from your comments i can see a lot of comments both in premier videos and the videos on youtube
Everything is definitely brought to my attention and I see that my concept of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength works 100% correctly based on their feedback. Among those subscribers, I remember uh, one particular person who have introduced himself as a professional astrologer who has got 20 years of experience in his town. He has mentioned that he started watching my videos since the commencement of COVID lockdown and he had gained knowledge about certain concepts that he was unclear and he also mentioned that he feels like as if he is reborn post watching my videos. He addressed my concepts as an eye opener to him and he got to understand the intricacies of astrology that he had not explored so far in his 20 years of his professional experience. And my concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength helped him to explore the intricacies of astrology. This is what I often mention in my videos. Those people who got diverted in a wrong path will definitely reach their goal with the help of my concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength. Having said all these and based on Bhavat Bhavam and my concepts of Subhatva, Pabhatva and Sukshma strength, when sun resides in the house of Pisces, the sun will get Subhatva and though it resides in the 8th house from its own house Leo, it can do the house effects of the Leo. Without Subhatva, the sun might deliver its significance but there will be some shortcomings regarding the house effects of the Leo. When sun resides in the house of Pisces, based on which Bhava, the house of Leo, is to your ascendant, the sun will deliver reduced house effects of the Leo to the ascendant. This is what you have to really understand better. The title of this video is the effects of planets in the house of Pisces. So I'm explaining to you the effect of the planet sun when it resides in the house of Pisces. When sun resides in the house of Pisces and if you want to make the predictions about the role of the sun in your birth chart, when sun resides in the house of Pisces based on which ascendant you are, the sun will not deliver the house effects of the Leo to you, yet it will deliver its significance since it is in the house of Pisces and had gained Subhatva by residing in the house of Jupiter. I have already explained the effects of the sun when it is Subhatva. The person will have a good father, will have benefits from the government, will gain an electrical field, electronics, the paternal profession, post in government sectors, etc. All these will be delivered by the sun which is in the house of Pisces. Now let me explain about the effect of the next planet moon. As I have already explained about the predictions of the moon in all the videos so far, you had to understand the moon based on its light energy. Since the moon is a luminous body that we can see with our naked eyes, you will be definitely able to assess the strength of the moon based on how it is in space. In daytime, we can see the luminous planet sun and in the nighttime, we can see the luminous planet moon. Therefore, you can understand and assess the strength of the moon based on its light energy in this case. The sun is a luminous body whose light never gets affected and it should always take the position of the sun as the earth based on the concept of a geocentric theory in astrology. When the moon is a waxing moon filled with a lot of light energy and when it resides in the house of Pisces, it will reflect all the characteristics of Jupiter. It is such a great planetary position for the moon. The waxing moon in the house of Pisces will deliver a lot of benefits and the moon will be in the ninth house to its own house cancer. 
when the moon is waxing moon and heading towards the full moon it will deliver immense great benefits provided it is not pavatva that is the significance of the moon that resides in the house of pisces when the moon has crossed the tithi such as ashtami or navami and has got a lot of light energy and heading towards closer to the full moon and when it resides in the ninth house to its own house cancer the moon will deliver all the benefits through its significance such as white color salt sugar egg liquids etc moon is the significator of the liquids and the moon signifies the liquids that are consumable especially and the saturn signifies the liquids that are not to be consumed when the moon resides in the house of pisces and remains subhatva it will deliver benefits through its significance such as professions related to liquids related to beauty etc when it is extremely subhatva then it will deliver its significance through the beauty related professions because the moon is the significator of the art beauty etc when the moon and venus are equally subhatva then the person will run a beauty salon or work as a makeup artist or they may even run a hair salon if you observe the people who run these sorts of business or who belongs to these professions then the moon and venus will be subhatva having said all these when the moon resides in the pisces with subhatva which is from the ninth house to its own house cancer and which is very close to the full moon then one who enjoys a major planetary period that is dasha of the moon will be very fortunate if the moon is the planet that has got the highest subhatva in one's natal chart then they can do the professions related to white color liquids vegetables fruits juices agriculture drip irrigation the professions related to white color like the selling of garlic sugar salt etc and the moon does not signify the pure white it signifies a half white therefore it can be like you know the products that are in half white not pure white can deliver benefits to the people therefore all these professions will render great benefits to the native or to the person in whose natal chart the moon is the highest subhatva planet in all cases when moon resides in the house of pisces and when it has got light energy then it is good if the moon is pavatva then it will render bad effects let us imagine a situation where the dark moon resides in the house of pisces and the sun is exalted and the moon is heading towards the dark moon in the month of chitirai that that is chaitra mid april to mid may but the sun is exalted and the moon resides in the house of pisces or let us take another situation where the moon is heading towards amavasya during the month of panguni that is palguni mid march to mid april amavasya and sun is in pisces there is no connection of natural benefits to the moon and imagine that pavatva is more then the major planetary period of the moon will totally spoil the life of the person when the moon has no light energy and remains pavatva in the house of pisces then it spoils the house of pisces as well when the moon has no light energy it spoils the house where it resides completely when there is no connection of a benefic such as jupiter or venus and the moon has no light energy that resides is in conjunction with the sun in the house of pisces then it spoils the pisces house completely the major planetary period of the moon will not be good therefore when moon resides in the house of pisces with light energy it is good 
Based on its light energy, there will be fluctuations in the life. If the moon has no light energy, then definitely there will be unfavorable results. The next planet that I am going to explain is Mars. This is such an auspicious house for Mars. When Mars resides in the house of Pisces, it will be in the 12th house from one of its own house Aries. And it will be in the 5th house from its another own house Scorpio. When Mars resides in the house of Pisces, which is the 12th house, to the Aries, indeed it is good. Usually you guys think that when Ascendant Lord is in the Ascendant house itself, it is good. You were taught in such a way. When Ascendant Lord is a malefic, then it is favorable. When Ascendant Lord is the malefic, it is favorable when it resides in the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house from its own house with Subhatva. For example, for the native of Aries Ascendant, it is better or it is beneficial when the Ascendant Lord Mars reside in the 12th house to its own house Aries in the house of Jupiter gaining Subhatva rather than being in the ascendant house that is Aries. The major planetary period of Mars will deliver benefits when Mars is in the 12th house to its own house Aries with Subhatva. The reason is Mars is in the 12th house to its own house and according to my concept of Sukshma strength, when a malefic is in the 6th house or 8th house or 12th house, from its own house with Subhatva, then it can deliver benefits. Therefore, when Mars resides in the house of Pisces, it is such an auspicious planetary position. In addition to this, when Mars gets connection of a benefit, then it is highly auspicious. Or when a waxing moon aspects, then it is also considered to be highly auspicious. When Mars is in connection with waxing moon, it is called as Chandramangal Yoga. Mars is made highly Subhatva by the waxing moon. Based on the strength of the moon, that is light energy of the moon, the benefits will be proportional to the Subhatva. When Mars resides in the house of Pisces, which is the 12th house to Aries and 5th house to another own house Scorpio, then Mars will not do the house effects of the Aries. It will deliver the house effects of the Scorpio more. What are the house effects of Aries? Army, medicine, sports, authority, etc. What is the house effect of the Scorpio? Insurance, marketing, professions that needs frequent traveling, communicating very smartly, working very hard with a great physique are all delivered by the house of Scorpio. When Mars resides in the house of Pisces, then it delivers the house effects of the Scorpio more and it will deliver the house effects of the Aries at a very reduced level. The Aries represents the fire and the Scorpio represents the water. When one of my subscribers told me that he works in the department of boilers, then I told him that his Mars should be connected with Aries and his Mars is Subhatva in the natal chart. And of course it was true after checking the chart. And I found that Aries is strong in his natal chart because Aries represents fire and the Scorpio signifies the Panjabuda Tattva water. These are two different Panjabuddha Tattva of the very same planet Mars because the Mars houses are opposite to each other. The Panjabuddha Tattva of the two houses are opposite in nature. One is fire and another is water. Scorpio represents the valor or the courage with knowledge and the Aries represents the courage without knowledge and without cleverness. How beautiful the houses represent the character. The Aries represents a blind courage without any cleverness. 
This signifies a man who goes to the battlefield with a lot of anger. The one who goes to the battlefield, fights against the enemies, gets wounded and dies. This is represented by Aries or the one who takes decisions without any forethought. The straight opposite character is Scorpio which is very courageous with a blend of cleverness as well. Therefore, when Mars resides in the house of Pisces, which is in the 12th house to the house of Aries, Mars will deliver its significance through the house effect of the Scorpio, which is courage plus cleverness. Since Mars is in the 12th house to the Aries, when it resides in the Pisces, it prevents the person from making decisions without any forethought or taking spontaneous decisions and then regretting the consequences later. These sort of setbacks will not be delivered by Mars when it resides in the house of Pisces, which is the 12th house to the Aries. When I make predictions, people find my predictions to be contradictory and this is one such situation. These are the reasons or these are the intricacies why certain statements of mine seems to be contradictory. I always say that astrology is a combination of many rules. Before making predictions, you have to consider the significance of the Bhava, the Panjabodha Tattva, the significance of the planet. You have to take into account everything before making predictions. You can right now see how I make different predictions for the Mars of Aries and for the Mars of Scorpio. When Mars resides in the house of Pisces, it is in the Panjamasthana, that is it is in the fifth house to the house of Scorpio and Mars will be in the twelfth house to Aries. The Mars in Aries delivers courage which has no forethought, very foolhardy. The person who is Mars in Aries will commit a crime in the name of courage. This is what Mars in Aries will deliver. The Mars in Scorpio whose house signifies the Panjabhuta Tattva, water, delivers courage. Of course, here too there is courage but there will be some cleverness in addition. The Mars in Scorpio knows when to hide and when to take a step forward. The Mars in Aries does not know such tactics. Mars in Aries knows only to take a leap, not to hide. But Mars in Scorpio knows the strategy, when to hide and when to leap. It knows the art of both. The Scorpio is a watery sign and Aries is a fiery sign. Now you see how the Panjabuddha Tattva element of the same planet delivers its characters in different ways and there is a change in the character. When you understand the difference between the significance of different houses of a planet and Bhavat Bhavam logic, you can make excellent classy predictions. Now, let me explain about the next planet, Mercury. Mercury gets debilitated in the house of Pisces. Venus gets exalted in the house of Pisces. What does it mean? When Mercury gets debilitated in the house of Pisces, it means that the intelligence becomes lessened. Mercury is a planet that signifies intelligence, humor, the cleverness, the ability to grasp everything, the ability to grasp things in a good manner and the Mercury gets debilitated in the 12th house of the Kalapurusha. I have mentioned this point when I was writing an article. I am not sure whether it is my book Ungal Jadagam Yoga Jadagama or the book Jodidam Yennum Deva Ragasiyam. I believe I have explained in my videos why in a particular house a planet gets exalted and another planet gets debilitated very brief manner. The planet that signifies the father that is the son gets exalted in the first house of the Kalapurusha 
and the planet that signifies the mother the moon gets exalted in the house of taurus that is the second house that is the second house of kala purusha the father gets exalted in the first house of the kala purusha and the mother gets exalted in the second house of the kala purusha if you observe the exalted and debilitated planets in every house you will understand it is based on the direction of east west north and south in the house of pisces the venus gets exalted and mercury gets debilitated and in house of virgo venus gets debilitated and mercury gets exalted i believe i explained this while i was explaining the planets in the house of virgo when there is need for more pleasures then the intelligence gets reduced venus gets exalted in the 12th house there is need of more pleasures more carnal pleasures more boga when there is need of pleasures enjoyments carnal pleasures pleasures through women then that is the place where intelligence gets reduced this is the intricacy behind the reason for exaltation of venus and debilitation of mercury in the 12th house this is why venus gets exalted in the 12th house of the kala purusha that signifies bed pleasures and mercury gets debilitated when venus gets exalted in the pisces house the need for pleasure through women or any other pleasure blindfolds the intelligence this is the reason why mercury is debilitated in pisces though mercury gets debilitated in the house of pisces it is subhatwa the house of jupiter always delivers subhatwa this is the second most significant house in delivering the subhatwa whereas the first significant house of subhatwa is sagittarius therefore when planets reside in the house of pisces with any status definitely the planet gets subhatwa despite its status whatever it is when mercury resides in the house of pisces it might do some bad effects through the house effects but it will not do bad effects through its significance since it gains subhatwa however the debilitation of a planet is also a kind of pabhatwa because when a planet gets debilitated it gives its significance at a very reduced level sometimes you get confused assuming that when a planet gets debilitated it does not give the significance at all no it's not true you can read one of my recent articles that i have written which is titled as debilitation is a pabhatwa when venus is debilitated it delivers only one girl to you if venus is exalted then it delivers a lot of girls to you no human being needs a lot of girls or thousands of girls just one girl is enough for her life this is the truth even when a planet gets debilitated it can deliver the significance to a man which is very basically needed for his life it will be in such a state as definitely however when the planet gets pabhatwa it is a different case then it will dig a grave for the person and will bury the person into that grave i will share another intricacy when a debilitated planet becomes subhatwa then you have to consider then it was not debilitated at all it will deliver its significance more you have to basically understand the difference between the debilitation and exaltation the way i explained if a planet is debilitated don't think it will not deliver its significance at all when venus gets debilitated you will get carnal pleasures you will get a good girl you will enjoy marital pleasures when it is debilitated alone in the house the person will definitely get one girl in his life the life of a man needs only one girl 
and the other needs are based on the desires that are not needed it is all the desires of human beings that brings unhappiness when mercury gets debilitated in the house of pisces it will be in the status in such a way that it can deliver its significance however if mercury gets pabatwa in conjunction with saturn mars or rahu it will be affected extremely it will deliver certain things like you know absence of mind the person will not be able to distinguish where to speak what therefore when mercury gets debilitated in the house of pisces it should be alone and subatwa or it can be in conjunction with its friends such as sun and venus the sun is the most friendly planet for mercury at the same time when sun becomes pabatwa based on the ascendant if it is not beneficial it delivers worse effects you have to make all these predictions based on which ascendant for which ascendant you are going to make predictions in case if mercury gets cancellation of debility that is nich banga it is favorable in general when mercury becomes pabatwa in the house of pisces the person will have less intelligence there are so many exceptions as well when mercury gets debilitated in the house of pisces there are many antidotes for the cancellation of debility i have explained niche banga logic in one of my premium videos recently and i can repeat all those points here when a planet gets debilitated the debilitated planet should be in the quadrant to the moon or the dispositor of the debilitated planet should be in the quadrant to the moon or the dispositor of the debilitated planet should be in quadrant to the ascendant or the dispositor of the debilitated planet here in case of mercury the jupiter which is the dispositor of pisces should be with ruling status or exaltation status or the dispositor of the debilitated planet should be in parivartan or the debilitated planet should be retrograde in this case the planet will deliver contrasting effects or the debilitated planet should be aspected by another debilitated planet or the mercury can be aspected by the waxing moon which is heading very close to the full moon in that case mercury will get the highest niche banga status that is cancellation of debility or the mercury can be in conjunction with the exalted planet venus in the house of pisces all these are antidotes for the planet which is debilitated let me make a recap of all the points first point the dispositor should be in the own house with the own house status the second point dispositor is in quadrant to the moon third point the debilitated planet itself in quadrant to the moon fourth point the dispositor of the debilitated planet in parivartan fifth point the retrograde of the debilitated planet sixth point the aspect of another debilitated planet seventh point the debilitated planet itself in quadrant to the moon which is a waxing moon which has lot of light energy that is heading close towards the full moon and more importantly moon aspecting the debilitated planet as seventh aspect in this case the fourth quadrant or the seventh quadrant is different from the seventh quadrant which is straight opposite to each other eighth point the conjunction of the exalted planet or the aspect of the exalted planet for example in this case if jupiter gets exalted and aspects debilitated mercury jupiter aspects its own house pisces where mercury is debilitated it means that mercury has got the highest strength therefore in order to assess the strength of the planet whether it is exalted or debilitated or any other status you have to go through all these points you have to make predictions with great care and patience 
astrology is not an easy and simple art. Merely by having a glance, you cannot assess the strength of the planet as exalted or debilitated. There are a lot more intricacies behind this that you have to check with great care and patience. I even mentioned in my previous videos that I could sometimes be criticized regarding Shadbala. I will definitely say please don't believe the concept of Shadbala. Shadbala is the calculation to assess the strength of the planet in ancient times. The creamiest layer or the layer above Shadbala is my concept of Pabatva, Subhatva and Sukshma strength. As an example, I have explained it with my own chart. In any situation, don't make predictions based on only Shadbala. It is of course pure mathematics and ultimate predictions can be made with the help of my concepts of Subhatva, Pabatva and Sukshma strength. Having said all these, I have explained with my own chart. I am a person who have made my profession through the significance of Mercury. My profession is based on Mercury. Astrology is a profession that is signified by Mercury. In my birth chart, Mercury is debilitated in the 10th place in Pisces and Mercury is in 7th rank based on Shadbala strength. Please try to understand why I insist not to consider much about Shadbala and don't make your prediction solely based on Shadbala. Having said all these, even when a planet is debilitated, yet it is in conjunction with the exalted planet or when it is in Parivartan with the dispositor or when it is in quadrant to the moon, in particular when it is directly opposite to the moon, which is a waxing moon, which has a lot of light energy, in the seventh house to the moon or the debilitated planet got retrograde or the very same debilitated planet gets Vargotama or the very same planet gets Parivartan, then it is an antidote for the debilitated planet. There are 10 to 12 rules that act as an antidote for the debilitated planet. When you see a debilitated planet, you go through all the rules that I listed and then assess the strength of the debilitated planet. You should know whether a planet is exactly debilitated or it is cancellation of debility that is Nietzsche Bhanga or even a step ahead Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga status. I have already explained about Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga in one of my videos two years ago. Nietzsche Bhanga Raja Yoga is nothing but when a debilitated planet is in conjunction with exalted planet that has a lot of light energy or in the aspect of the exalted planet that has a lot of light energy or in the quadrant to the moon which is waxing and has light energy, very high light, light energy. This is how the planet will have Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga status and it can deliver benefits. The Nietzsche Bhanga status and Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga status are two different status, they are distinct. Please try to understand the difference. Having said all this, when Mercury resides in the house of Pisces, it is not a setback. Don't be concerned that if in your children's birth chart Mercury is debilitated, please don't worry whether your child will be educated or not, whether the child will possess intelligence or not. You can also see people whose Mercury is debilitated yet will possess a great rank in technology field. The person will be working in the IT field, software field or astrology field. And you might be confused if you see such a person whose mercury is debilitated. Therefore, what you have to do is you have to apply all the rules that I have explained now to you. The planet that resides in the house of Pisces which is pictorially represented here as two fishes 
that catches the tail of each other will give sometimes contrasting effects. Upside down effects. Because this is the sign of duality. Therefore, when planets reside in the house of Pisces, you have to make predictions with great care and after examination of all the intricacies. Well, in my next video, I will explain about the effects of other planets such as Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu in the house of Pisces. And definitely, I am going to share much more intricacies. Well, this is question time. When Mercury resides in Pisces, which is aspected by waxing moon that has got good light energy, will the debilitation of the Mercury be cancelled or not? Please write your answer in the comment section of this video. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writeus at gmail.com. Thank you.